Oh, by the way, uh, just in case anyone uh, uh, destroyed some of those uh, SIP resistors, I've got some extras, both kinds. They're black, the other ones are maroon. Don't let that freak you out. Freak you out for a little while. But the guy was like, no, 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 this is the thing that you need. Okay. Yeah, so if anyone needs some, you can, you know, they're here for you. Um, but today, um, showed up because Norm asked me to uh, demo uh, you know, the, uh, these things that I built, these light show contraptions. Uh, this one's called the uh, trash lights on your cheap or Mr. Ms. trash lights. Uh, <clears throat> the gender you feel like. And um, built this uh, and the electric rainbow machine over here. Both of these are audio activated uh, lighting. Uh, light to, or sound to light translation machines. So, I don't know, it's probably before your time, but there was a place called the Planetarium. It's probably still existing there. But uh, do you guys, who knows about that place? Anyone? Yeah, everyone, right? Okay. I mean, did anyone go to the shows there? Yeah, really? I thought they closed that stuff totally. Anyway, they had like Laser Floyd, Laser Zeppelin, Laser Beatles, and all that stuff. Anyway, I'd go there, you know. <laughs> And uh, kind of a very formative memory in my teen years. And uh, I was heartbroken when the place shut down. I was like, what is this? This is an outrage. So this was my pre-introduction to Norm White and his lovely uh, electro world wormhole that he's created for everybody here. Uh, I say that because, you know, just like all of you, like I probably, everyone's got very good with electronics that they come in here with. Um, myself, I had nothing. I uh, no idea, I just had this, I wanted to do it. But Norm was able to build a bridge, you know, using you know, the analogies and like real life examples that you can really, like, that I could relate to. So anyways, I hope, uh, you know, you can be able to open up the world that kind of world for you. Because literally, and you didn't pay me to say that, it was really like without him, None of this would have been possible for me. It would have been a whole new world. Um, so, uh, and so where we? So where I came from? Oh yeah. So Norm's class. Uh, to, I, it's funny because I started here at uh, at Ryerson. I took uh, the first year here, and then I felt I wanted something a little bit more with a little bit more latitude at the time. The program was still in its infancy here. The ERs program. It's come a long way, obviously, since you've got some like more defecting from an art college to uh, come teach you guys here. So, um, essentially, uh, I came from uh, OCA. I went to OCA after and then became OCAD, uh, and uh, came from into the, the art school situation as a musician, just wanted to learn new stuff. So, I learned. Stuff through more. Uh, let's see. Uh, where else did I come from? What else did I do? Uh, the creative impetus for getting into making light shows. Okay. Um, the first and foremost, uh, musicians. So started doing that when I was like 14, 15. We got a four track, you know, and then just and I think this top. I didn't realize that at the time, but. Um, Really, it was it was my first experience with cybernetics. You know, although I never would have understood it at the time, if, you know, someone would have said that to me because of the fact that there was like a feedback loop. I record something. You know, if you just record stuff without, I mean, just play stuff without hearing it back, it's like it's really hard to get outside of your head to you know, get another idea of what you know what you're actually hearing. So through the but you know hearing it back on tape, I was like, oh, that part was awful. I thought it was so good or whatever. So it's this iterative process that developed through multi-tracking that led into this real desire to have some kind of like force feedback um, in my methodology and the stuff that I make. Um, let's see. And if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free. I don't want to be like this thing where I'm talking, talking, you guys are listening, listening or not. It's like we're not caring, it's fine. But I mean just feel free to just ask questions. Um, let's see. Uh, so after uh, I uh, graduated uh, OCAD, uh, just kind of wandered around 
Uh, for a few years, she got different stuff, living in uh, New York for a couple of years, but she all for a couple of years, just like getting uh, acquainted with other ways of living, other ways of perception. And uh, then came back here to Toronto, and um, I was still always the constant in my life was doing music. So I set out to uh, make a virtual band for myself, and that was new to me on the trash list. <clears throat> Because I was thinking, I was, you know, how lame it is to go see a solo performer and like if there's not much going on. It's not the same experience as a band. So I was trying to kind of create a kind of like a one man, one person karaoke machine band, right? So each trash light would be expanding and contracting to the sound of each instrument that was kind of my backing track. So this would, let's say, represent uh, the drum track, and then there'd be another. Uh, trash light representing the vocal, a synthesizer, and so on, whatever. And so it, the idea was really appealing to me because it, it reminded me of another technology uh, which everyone's familiar with, even if they haven't directly encountered it, which is the player piano. Um, it's like it's phantom fingers. Like, and, and you look at the player piano, and you, you, every, everyone's pretty much familiar with the player piano, right? Okay, so you've got like a, a, that roll, the piano roll that goes around, and it's got little gives of information. And I thought to myself, wow, oh, that's like one of, that's like, how different is that from memory storage in a computer? It's basically a, a mechanical analog of that. So I was really fascinated by that. And I went to uh, traveling to San Francisco, and lo and behold, there was a player piano museum. And, uh, oh, but I forgot to tell you, on the way there, I went through Vegas. So, that's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what really, the fusion of those two things, and that's why I'm saying, you know, getting onto the next little nodule here, in defense of tinkering, and to be, not be afraid to try to put two, two or three or n amount of things together, that at first seems kind of anomalous. So, it was basically the, the um, the combination of Vegas and this player piano museum in San Francisco that kind of gave me the final impetus whenever I came back to Toronto. I was riding on my bike, I was feeling really good, and, uh, and, I, and I, I got this idea, you know, so, because I was like, wow, there's a, what, why do we have to be every, there is something, a lot of art making, at least for me, comes from this kind of psychic disturbance. You know, something's bugging me, but I don't know quite what. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. I think you can. But essentially, uh, the what happened was it was bothering me that uh, on a V meter you'd only see like a, a linear uh, representation of sound. So I wanted to see uh, a, a circular uh, representation of sound, not in like uh, whenever you throw a pebble, you know, in, in a still pond or whatever. It's not just going one way, right? It's a circular expression. So I, I thought this would be my idea of trying to do justice to a more natural representation of the phenomenon of sound. Okay, so um, let's see. And let me just go, before we screen this film, let me just mention one last thing kind of along the lines of uh, this idea of putting things together that at first glance don't uh, make any sense. Uh, are you guys uh, familiar with uh, something called circuit bending? 